Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take another look at Arsenal Image Mounter. While I've covered this powerful tool before in a previous episode, this episode is going to go into far more detail. In fact, we're going to cover advanced features such as the ability to be able to boot a disk image into a virtual machine, the ability to be able to bypass or even crack credentials, and even some BitLocker related options. So buckle up because there's a lot of information here, which is why the episode is so long. Before we get started, this episode is sponsored by 13 Cubed. So head over to training.13cubed.com today to take a look at the high quality, affordable, online and on-demand training courses from 13 Cubed. They all include 365 days of access and a certification attempt is included within each course. So check them out today at training.13cubed.com. All right, let's get started. Let's start with the basics. We're going to be using the free version of Arsenal Image Mounter to mount a disk image. Now, if you've already used Arsenal Image Mounter for quite some time, don't click away just yet. You may be familiar with this, but some of the professional mode options that I'm going to be showing you later, you may not have seen yet. So I'll show you why you might want to consider upgrading to that professional version. But that being said, even the free version is extremely powerful. Let's go ahead and click on OK here. And what we're going to do once the option becomes available is click on the Mount Disk Image button. And once we do so, we'll be taken to a place where we can choose an image file. Notice that we're looking at my C colon slash cases directory, which is the directory from which I mounted the last disk image. So it's pulling up that same location. And as you can see within this location, there's a file called Windows 11 Pro.vmdk, which is indeed a VMware ESXi disk image for a Windows 11 box. Let's go ahead and double click on this. And now let's talk about our mount options that are available to us in the free version. You will note that some of these are grayed out. We'll talk about that as we get to them. But starting at the top, we've got disk device read only. This is what I like to call the plain vanilla option. This is going to allow you to quickly mount the disk image as read only with no write operations allowed. And this is going to be a very typical scenario. So very often you'll just click okay at this point and proceed on. But the next option here is called Disk Device Write Temporary. And what this is going to do is what I like to call pretend modify the disk image, or at least allow you to pretend modify the disk image. And what I mean by that is you're not actually changing anything in the underlying disk image itself. What you're doing is using a Delta file or a differencing file to keep track of any changes that you make. So for example, maybe you delete a file from the disk image or add a file to the disk image or change the attributes of a file. Well, any of those changes are actually being tracked within that differencing file. And you'll notice that we have three sub options here. The first says specify an alternate differencing file location. So maybe you don't want it to be located alongside the disk image that you're mounting. You can choose another location should you desire. You can also choose the option to delete the differencing file after you unmount the disk image, which I typically use. And then lastly, you can choose not to use a differencing file at all and instead store the differencing data in RAM. But regardless of which sub option you choose, if you choose disk device write temporary, again, you're not actually modifying the image. Rather, you have the ability to pretend to modify it and those deltas are being kept track of either via a differencing file written to disk or in RAM should you choose that option. The next option is only going to be available in the professional mode or professional version of Arsenal Image Mounter. It's called Windows File System Driver Bypass Read Only. So let's talk about what that means. If you do have the professional mode enabled, then this is going to allow you to use Disk Utils, which is a .NET library that can be used to read and write ISO files as well as virtual machine disk files like VHD, VHDX, VMDK, and so on. As the description says, this can be used to bypass NTFS file system security, expose NTFS meta files, recover deleted files, and it may even help with reading files from corrupted disk images. Now note that it says that if BitLocker protected volumes are in use, this is not going to be supported with this option. So keep that in mind. Next up, we have disk device write original, and the name is the recipe here. This is going to allow you to mount a disk image but you can change the underlying contents of the disk image. So be very careful with this option. Now, there are times where you may want to do this, but typically you would have your evidence preserved elsewhere and you'd be operating off a copy, obviously, and not modifying your master copy. 
But just know that if you do choose this option, which is in red text, which would give you a clue that that could be potentially dangerous, just know that if you choose this, you are actually modifying the contents of the disk image itself. Next up, we have the option called Windows File System Driver Bypass Write Original. And notice that this too is grayed out, indicating that it would only be available in professional mode. Again, the name is the recipe. If you do have the professional mode enabled, you can use this to also bypass NTFS file system security and modify the contents of the image. Notice that we do have a few additional options under here, including the option to change the sector size, which by default is set to 512, but you can change it to various other options here should you need to do so. There's also an option here called fake disk signature, which is available in both the free and professional modes. It's grayed out here because it's unavailable based on our current circumstances, but this is going to be useful if the disk signature is missing or otherwise corrupt. We also have the option to create a removable disk device. Now this can help with mounting images containing partitions instead of complete disks or even images without partition tables. And then lastly, this is pretty self-explanatory, but if you choose automatically remount at Arsenal Image Mounter Startup, then this particular disk image that I've selected is going to be automatically mounted each time you launch Arsenal Image Mounter. In our case, let's go back up and choose the boring plain vanilla option of disk device read only because that's going to be fine for this simple use case. And when we press OK here, we're typically for a Windows image going to have three different mount points here. And the reason why is because one is going to be the actual contents of the OS itself. The next will be a system reserve partition. And then you might also have an EFI partition as well. Let's go ahead and pull up Windows Terminal and take a look at these three mount points that we have and see if that holds true. So first, let's visit D. And as you can see, this appears to be the root of the OS volume. Let's check out E. And as you can see, there's nothing here. This is likely going to be the system reserved partition. And then F is probably going to be EFI. And yep, it is. You can see it right here. So that's our EFI partition. And that's all there is to it. At this point, we could switch back over to D and from here, we have the ability to be able to interact with this disk image because it is mounted for us. Again, it's read only, so we can't actually change any of the contents. But in many use cases, this is all you would need because now you can go and grab files or forensic artifacts or do whatever you need to do with this mounted disk image. But of course, we're only scratching the surface here. That is the simplest use case for Arsenal Image Mounter. It is way more powerful than that, especially with the professional mode enabled. So let's talk about some of the more advanced features next. As you can see, I have the professional mode enabled for this copy of Arsenal Image Mounter. Let's go ahead and click on OK and go over to Mount Disk Image. And on my desktop, I have a VMDK flat file that we're going to be using for this demo. Let's choose that. And for mount options, we're going to need to choose Disk Device Write Temporary. You'll notice that it says it's required for launching virtual machines, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. I'm also going to tick the box next to delete differencing file after unmount, which is something that I usually get in the habit of doing just so it cleans up that Delta file, the file that stores those changes made to the disk image. Because remember, it's using a write overlay to keep track of that. Let's go ahead and choose OK. And after a few seconds, you'll see that we do indeed have our mount points. Now let's go ahead and go down to the option that says launch VM, which is available because we have the professional mode enabled for this copy of Arsenal Image Mounter. We'll go ahead and click this, and after a few seconds, we will see some options that will be available to us. As you can see, the network connection is by default disconnected, which is probably what you're going to want. We can enable guest services, which could be very handy if you want to be able to copy and paste between the host and the VM. By default, that's not enabled. And for the rest of the options, we'll just leave them at the defaults. Notice there is an advanced section here as well for enabling nested virtualization or disabling RDP and WMI for extreme isolation. Again, we're going to leave all of these at the default. But here's the problem. When we click OK, after a few seconds, you're going to notice that we get an error. It says virtual machine failed. Launching virtual machines requires that Arsenal Image Mounter and Hyper-V and then it shows the OS versions, Windows 10, Windows 11, Server 2016 or 2019, Professional Enterprise, Server 64, and so on are supported, and that it's running on bare metal. Well, all of those conditions are actually met. This is running on bare metal, and this is Windows 11 Professional. 
So why isn't this working? Well, one of the reasons is I have both WSL and VMware Workstation Professional installed here. So it turns out there's a command that we probably need to run to actually set Hyper-V as the default so this will work. If I pull up Notepad, you'll see the command right here, and I will put this in the video's description as well. But notice this DISM command, which will just re-enable the Microsoft Hyper-V feature. So I'll press Control-A to select this and Control-C to copy it to the clipboard. And I already have an administrative terminal pulled up here, or administrative command prompt more specifically. So let's go ahead and right click to paste this and press enter. And we'll see what happens after this feature is re-enabled. Again, technically it is already enabled, but let's wait a moment. And once this re-enables that feature, we'll go ahead and see what happens. Okay, we're back after a quick reboot. So let's try again. We'll go over to mount disk image, choose the same image, write temporary, delete differencing file after unmount, and then click OK. And at this point, we have once again mounted the disk image. Now let's try launch VM again. So after a few seconds, we should get those options that we just covered, and you can see them right here. I want to point out that bypass Windows authentication is already checked, so keep that in mind because this is going to be really cool. This is the first advanced feature I want to show you. Well, that in addition to just being able to launch a disk image as a virtual machine, which is already pretty incredible. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And after a few seconds, we should start seeing some Hyper-V action here. Notice that it says the disk is not offline. The disk physical drive 3, which is currently mounted by AIM, needs to be in offline mode to make it accessible to the virtual machine, which makes sense. So let's go ahead and say yes. And as you can see, we now have a Hyper-V window. Let's go ahead and click on start. And there'll be an option here asking us to select a resolution if we wanted to change the resolution. And in this case, I'm just going to click the little X here because the window that's already opened will be fine. So now you can see that the machine is trying to boot. So with any luck, we'll actually see a Windows logon prompt. And yep, there it is. So at this point, we have a user listed right here. But check it out. If we go down and click the little man, gingerbread man, whatever you call the thing that says accessibility, then when we do that, you'll notice that we get the AIM Virtual Machine Tools pop up here. So it's injected the Arsenal Image Mounter tools into the virtual machine. And notice that we do have a couple of users here. We have one that looks like a domain user. It says account type active directory. And then we have a local user here. And notice that we do have the option to reset the password or privileges associated with either of these, uh, or at least for the local account. For the Active Directory account, we can change it to administrator if we want to. And notice that password bypass mode is already checked. So in theory, we should be able to log in as either of these accounts without any password. So let's just try temp admin, for example, which is a local user. So if we click back to log on screen, then click on other user, I'll type dot backslash temp admin. And for the password, I'm just going to leave it blank and press enter. And we should be able to log in without any password. And you can see we in fact have, and we're in Windows. In fact, it looks like the recycle bin has a few things in it. If we launch Edge just as a test, it should come right up. Of course, remember the network is disconnected, so we don't have any internet access. But if we go over to history, you can see that there is some history here from what looks like Monday, January the 15th, 2024. So clearly this is working. We have successfully mounted a disk image and booted that disk image in a Hyper-V VM. And not only that, but we've bypassed authentication because both of those users you saw do have passwords associated with them. I don't know what the passwords are, but it didn't matter. We just bypassed it all together, which is pretty awesome. The other thing I'll point out here is that if you go up to the file menu and click on settings, you can actually change the Hyper-V settings just as you could with any other Hyper-V VM. So for example, here's the memory configuration for the machine, the hard disk configuration, checkpoints, and so on. So all of that can be changed right here just as you could with any other Hyper-V virtual machine. Okay, so that's the first advanced feature I wanted to show you. Now let's talk about what else this software can do for you. We just saw a powerful example of how useful Arsenal Image Mounter can be for bypassing the credentials associated with accounts when you boot a disk image into a VM. We were able to log in using a blank password, despite the fact that we had no idea what the actual credentials were for the account that we ended up using.
So essentially, the bypass Windows authentication feature will get you past the Windows password, pins, biometric, or smart card authentication, but it will not get you access to something called DP API protected data, like browser stored passwords or EFS encrypted objects, because DP API has not been unlocked. For context, DP API, or Data Protection Application Programming Interface, is a Windows feature for encrypting sensitive data like passwords using user or system credentials for security. It essentially simplifies the encryption process for developers by handling those cryptographic key management details behind the scenes. The DP API bypass feature, which is more accurately a suite of multiple DP API bypasses depending on the current circumstances, will get you access to that DP API protected data. In fact, there's now a new feature that expands on those existing methods of DP API bypass. We can use the new database-driven password attack functionality to essentially brute force the password. Arsenal Recon has a password database called Password Sledgehammer. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's a database that's over 70 gigs in size with over 1 billion password combinations. Now, of course, you can easily supply your own password database or word list. And in fact, you can even import your own password list into an in-memory database for added convenience. So, for example, maybe during an investigation, you've already come across a list of possible credentials that you'd like to try. Well, you can simply import that list into an in-memory database and let Arsenal Image Mounter do the work for you. So let me show you how all of this works. What we're going to do is go up to the Advanced menu and go down to Use Password Attack Database. From here, you'll notice that we do have the option to specify a new RAM database, and that's the part where you would actually supply a list that you've already compiled, which would then be placed into an in-memory database. In this case, I'm not going to do that, so I'll click Close DB, and instead, I'm going to click on the Open slash Create button. Notice that we're currently in the Tools Arsenal Recon Arsenal Image Mounter Password underscore Sledgehammer folder. Now, this just happens to be where I've placed the password database on my system. The path doesn't really matter. You can place it anywhere you'd like. But in this case, I'm going to select this file right here, which, as you can see, is quite large, over 70 gigs in size. I'll go ahead and double click on this and notice that it says password count scanning. When this is done scanning, it should find, as I mentioned, more than 1 billion passwords in the list. Let's go ahead and let it finish scanning. And as you can see, it is at 1.1 billion passwords, and the box next to used does have a check mark in it, so we should be good to go at this point. Let's go ahead and click on Done, and now we're going to go down to Launch VM as we've done before, and this time we're going to need to change one of the options. So we'll give it a second and wait till the options display, and then I'll show you what we need to do. Okay, so notice that it says Bypass Data Protection API, DP API for user, and then we have a drop down. Well, check this out. If I click the drop down, notice that we have one of the accounts, temp admin, and it's already recovered the password for it. The password in all caps is temp password, and it immediately found it. Now, the password for the domain user, Lola Bunny, says password brute search in parentheses. Now, if we choose this particular option, notice that it says it's going to take a little less than 13 hours to complete that password brute force. Now, of course, this time is going to vary greatly. And of course, the more accounts you actually password brute force, then obviously the longer it's going to take. But just know that during this process, it's going to try numerous combinations of these passwords to try to actually brute force and essentially guess what the password is. I'll go ahead and click OK for demonstration purposes. And notice that it's kicked it off and it actually says searching database for matching password. We're at 0.0%. But after a few seconds, this should start to increment. And you can also see below that the estimated time remaining. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through and make you sit for this because this would be the world's longest YouTube video, and there's really no point in that. You get the idea of how this works because it's doing its thing right now. So essentially, you could walk away, come back, and hopefully, with any luck, you'll actually have a match for the password when it's completed. And that's all there is to using this powerful password attack functionality. So again, when DP API bypass may not work for a disk image, we have this as another available option, or in situations where you have to have the credentials for whatever reason, the password sledgehammer database or using a password database of your own, using this new database-driven password attack functionality may be exactly what you're looking for. So this is yet another very powerful feature of Arsenal Image Mounter. The next advanced feature I want to show you revolves around volume shadow copies. 
Let's go back to mount disk image. And on the desktop, I now have a new image called win10-test-bm.eo1. Let's select that. And for the mount options, we'll keep it at the default of disk device read only and click on OK. Now, this is nothing new. After a few seconds, we should have our mount points and you can see them right here. But notice at the bottom, we have a mount VSCs button that is now clickable. It's not grayed out as it was before. And that's because this EO1 disk image does indeed have volume shadow copies present, three of them to be exact. Let's go ahead and click on this option and see what we can do. Notice that we have two volume shadow copy options at this point, with the default being Arsenal Write Temporary Volume Shadow Copy Mount. It says that this will mount the contents of VSCs as complete disks in write temporary mode using Arsenal's VSC parsing and Windows NTFS driver. Notice that it says this option is useful for launching VSCs into virtual machines. That's right, we can actually boot any one of these volume shadow copies as a VM, which is pretty incredible. And you can see all three of those volume shadow copies listed right here, along with the timestamps. Remember, this is essentially a snapshot in time of what this particular disk looked like at the time at which the volume shadow copy was taken. So we can effectively go back in time by mounting these volume shadow copies and browsing them. But not only that, we can boot them as VMs and take a look at what that system looked like at that particular timestamp, the time at which the volume shadow copy was taken, which is going to be incredibly powerful. Let's leave all three of these selected, which is the default, and we'll go ahead and click on OK. Notice that it wants me to select a folder for the write overlay differencing files, and it's sitting at the desktop right now, so that's going to be fine. I'll choose select folder. And now we need to be patient for a second because what it's going to do is try to start mounting those volume shadow copies as their own mount points. We have an I, a J, and a K. So before we even try something more fancy like launching these as a VM, let's make sure that we can actually see the contents of I, J, and K. So to do that, we'll pop open an administrative command prompt, which I have right here, and we'll start with I and take a look at the contents. And this does appear to work. It looks like we're looking at the root of the OS volume. And if we take a look at J, we see the same. And if we take a look at K, we see the same. So it looks like this is indeed working and we have successfully mounted our volume shadow copies, which by itself is incredibly powerful and useful when we're working with disk images. But as I said, it gets even better. Let's go back to Arsenal Image Mounter, and I already have the K mount point selected, so let's go ahead and click on Launch VM and see what happens. Now, just as we've previously seen with this option, this will take a few moments, but we should get the familiar VM options after a few seconds. And you can see the options window right here. We'll leave everything at the default and click on OK. And now at this point, it's going through and running check disk against this particular volume, so let's give it a moment to do that. And as you can see, we're now getting the disk not offline prompt. So we'll go ahead and choose yes here. And after a few seconds, we have our Hyper-V window. So let's go ahead and click on start and try to boot this particular volume shadow copy as a virtual machine. And as you can see, it's trying. We see the Windows 10 boot logo. And let's just give this a few seconds and see if we can make it all the way at the logon prompt here. We'll go ahead and close the display configuration dialog because I don't need to change that. Let's give this just a little bit longer and see if we can actually see the logon prompt. And about 30 seconds later, you can see that we are at the Windows 10 logon screen, and this did appear to boot just fine, which is pretty awesome. All right, let's go ahead and close this. And the next thing I want to show you is the other volume shadow copy option. Now, remember, if you're going to launch a VM from a volume shadow copy, you need to choose the option that we just chose. But for the sake of completeness, let me show you the other option. I'll click on remove all, and then we'll go back to mount disk image. We'll choose the same image again. We'll leave it at disk device read only. Click on OK. And at this point, we'll have the standard mount points. Let's go back to mount VSCs. And this time, we're going to choose the top option, which says Arsenal Volume Shadow Copy Mount with Windows File System Driver Bypass. Notice that it says this will mount the contents of VSCs using Arsenal's VSC parsing and disk utils NTFS driver. And notice that it says it's useful for exposing the NTFS meta files and bypassing file system security. So we'll choose that option and click on OK. And notice that we're being prompted to select the folder where the volume shadow copies will be mounted. What I'm going to do is go to the desktop and create what will be used as a symbolic directory link or a directory symbolic link. And I'll just call this test. At this point, I'll choose select folder. 
And now what should happen is we should have our directory symbolic links within the test folder that I just created on the desktop. And by clicking on each of those, we should, in theory, be able to browse those volume shadow copies. So let's go ahead and give this a couple of minutes and we'll come back when it's done and take a look at what we have. And after a couple of minutes, this Windows Explorer window automatically popped up. And as you can see, we have our three symbolic links right here. If we click on the first one, this is indeed the root of the file system. And we do see those NTFS meta files as promised. If we go back to the second one, we see the same. We do have a bunch of MFT prepended directories here, but otherwise it looks like the data is available to us. And if we click on the third one, we see the same. So it looks like all three of those were successfully mounted. Now remember, you cannot spin up a virtual machine when this option is selected. If we go back to Arsenal Image Mounter, yes, we do have the Launch VM option for the disk image itself, but notice that when we click on one of the volume shadow copies, it's grayed out. So just remember that you do need to choose the default option that we used first if you want to launch a VM from a volume shadow copy. But that's all there is to it. That's a look at volume shadow copy operations within Arsenal Image Mounter. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I realize this is a very long episode, but there's a lot to cover here. And in fact, there's one last thing I need to show you, and it involves BitLocker. This is really cool. Let's go over to Mount Disk Image, and on the desktop, I now have a BitLocker encrypted disk image called Romeo.eo1. Let's select it, and for the mount options, we'll keep it at the default of Disk Device Read Only, and click OK. After a couple of seconds, we should be prompted to enter the password to unlock the drive, or we can click more options and enter the recovery key. I happen to have the password already copied to the clipboard, so I'll paste it in here and click unlock. And at this point, we now have the ability to access our BitLocker encrypted disk image just as we would a normal disk image, which is already very convenient, but we can do more. Let's go up to the BitLocker menu, and let me show you that there is a show BitLocker status option, which you can see right here, which will give you some basic information about the BitLocker status. That's convenient, but if we go back to that menu, you might have seen that there's a save as fully decrypted image file option. So let's click that. And notice that we have a file name that we can specify. And for the type, we can save the image as a VHD, VHDX, DD or RAW, VDI, VMDK, or EO1. So if I choose, for example, VHDX and type in Romeo here, we can now press enter and this will write out our currently encrypted BitLocker disk image as a non-encrypted VHDX disk image. How cool is that? So at that point, we have a decrypted disk image, which we can then use. So that's the last advanced feature I wanted to show you within Arsenal Image Mounter. And as you can imagine, that will be a very convenient option for many people. And that wraps up everything I wanted to cover regarding Arsenal Image Mounter, both the free version and the professional mode version. This is a very powerful tool, and if you haven't checked it out or if you haven't used it recently, I would invite you to do so because there are a lot of powerful features here. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.